Hello learners, this is LMU TV where we get to watch and learn. This is your teacher, Rojab Michira. Our topic of discussion today is early man. And we did introduce the stages of evolution of man. And our first stage we looked at is Aegeopithecus as the first stage of evolution of man. Now today we are going to look at Dreopithecus Africanus as the second stage of evolution of man. Now class, by the end of the lesson, I expect that each and every one of us will be able to state the characteristics of the Dreopithecus Africanus. Now, can you get to learn what the Dreopithecus Africanus is? And I said, if you want to understand the evolution of man, you must first get to know where it was first found and also the features of those uh, development stages. Now, in Dreopithecus Africanus, it can also it is also called as procosal, right? So if you get to see procosal, it is another term used instead of Dreopithecus africanus. Now, the remains of Dreopithecus africanus were found in Rusinga Island within Lake Victoria. Now, Rusinga Island is within the Lake Victoria, and an island is a piece of, uh, of land that is surrounded by water. So in Lake Victoria, we have this island, we call it Rusinga Island. And who found the Dreopithecus Africanus? Who first discovered it? So it was discovered in Kenya by Mary and Louis Leakey. These are the first uh, people who discovered Dreopithecus Africanus that it existed. And it was found in uh, Rusinga Island in Lake Victoria. Now we can get to see Lake Victoria, right? That is Lake Victoria. Now, can we get to locate where Rusinga Island is? As I told you, this is a dry land that is surrounded by water. So in our second image, you can see Lake Victoria, right? Then it surrounds a dry land. That is the Rusinga Island where Dreopithecus Africanus was first discovered. Now, straight to the features of Dreopithecus Africanus as the second stage for evolution of man. Now, we get to realize that the Dreopithecus Africanus consisted of a skull whose appearance was closer to man. Can you get to look at your friend and get to see the kind of skull they have, right? Or again, you, you can't see a skull because it is, it is clothed with, 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 with flesh. Now, can you get to see our image, right? That is the skull. Now, can you look at that skull and the skull of man? It's, it, it, it looked closer to that of man. You can get to see our second image. That is the skull also. Now, if you get to compare those skulls, they are closely, their appearance is closer to that of the modern man. So the skull was, uh, was closer to that of man. Can you get to look at the second feature of Dreopithecus africanus? It was uh, like a chimpanzee in size with a uh, quadrupedal movement by with a smooth forehead. What do we mean by a quadrupedal movement? That is it. That is the quadrupedal movement, meaning it moved in fours, right? So we have got the, the front lip and the hind lips. So the chimpanzee is moving in fours. And as we said, the Diopithecus africanus, it was like a chimpanzee. Can we get not to look at that? It is more close to a chimpanzee. If you have ever seen a chimpanzee, that is how the Diopithecus africanus looks. And also, another feature of Diopithecus africanus, it is that it had long teeth like other animals, right? And this, the shape of the teeth indicated that it ate fruits. Get to look at the teeth of, uh, of the Diopithecus africanus. It is that of like other animals, right? And this showed that it ate fruits. Now, if you get to, to compare those teeth that we're having there and the teeth of modern man, we can closely say that the teeth of the Diopithecus africanus and other animals are closely related. Now, class, we have looked at various features of Dreopithecus africanus. How can you identify an Africanus, uh, a Dreopithecus africanus? And we have first said, look at the teeth, look at the movement, right? And look at the appearance. First, it looks like a chimpanzee. Talk of the quadrupedal movement. It moved in force, and also the teeth were closer to that of other animals. Now, class, can we get to look at this activity? That is an activity that we get to try and see how best we have understood that subtopic of Dropithecus africanus or other prongosal. Now, can we get to 
state where the first remains of Reopithecus africanus were found, right? And also, in addition to that, can you get to uh, name the person who discovered Reopithecus africanus? And for our reference, can we get to use Evolving World History and Government Form 2, Oxford University Press, 6th edition? Now, learners, we have got very many videos. We have got very many live, uh, live classes, right? You can follow us on Twitter. You can get to watch our live classes uh, via Facebook. And also, you can watch our recorded classes via our YouTube page. And always don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube uh, page, which is Elimu TV. And also, you can get in touch with us. Send us an SMS via our contact line, which is 0723 Welcome again to Elimu TV, a station where you watch and learn.